What is up, everybody? Sean Sheehan back here with another edition of The Sheehan Show on Sherdog.com. And today I am looking ahead to 161, the latest offering uh, from over in Singapore and one championship going down uh, on the 29th of September upcoming this year. Um, It's another one of those cards that is filled with... uh, um, I would say mostly the, the, the top fights in, it, in this uh, obviously are, are MMA fights but there's a bit of kickboxing in my tie and other things as well mostly today I'm obviously going to talk you through the uh, the MMA and I'm sure there's a kickboxing website or something out there <laughs> I'll talk you through that but uh, yeah I'm going to concentrate mostly on the MMA fights uh, and maybe just read through uh, the card as they have it in as well with the uh, with the others on it um, I know there are some big kickboxing matches right up the top uh, with Sancho I believe is even the uh, the main event uh, in the uh, in in the uh, for the Muay Thai World Championship in, in the featherweight division, um, and there is some of the big uh, kickboxing uh, heavyweight uh, Grand Prix fights on as well uh, this uh, week. The two semi finals are on there. I know Gutu and Sanchez is on in one of them, and a few others as well. But um, I think there are some very, very fun MMA fights coming up uh, on this card, and we'll have a preview for the um, one on Amazon Prime 2 card uh, as well coming up, which is even a couple more. As I record here, just a a, a week or so or a few days out from the card, um, some fights have even been added over the last few days, so uh, I think there are a couple of names in there that people will be excited about seeing added to the card. Uh, one of which I think people will be very excited because Rogue Rogue is back and we will talk about that uh, in a second. The first fight I want to talk about here uh, is uh, Yuya Wayamatsu against uh, Shu Wang. Um, what's a good bit of the two of these guys t- today preparing for this? And as you know, we know um, Wakamatsu he has been around, you know, the, the top of that division for a while now. Obviously, he fought Demetrius Johnson back in 2019, fought Adriano Morais, um Back in March, you know, has had obviously a good few fights and won every fight uh, in between. Went uh, what five and all in between the the two of those. Obviously losing uh, via guillotine joke. Uh, funnily enough, uh, to to both of those guys, but that doesn't obviously tell the full story of him as a fighter. He's a very very good fighter. I believe he's training. Um, if not full time, at least part time in Sanford MMA now, and it's it's really shown. I think um, the fight. I watched one of his fights. They were talking about how his um, takedown game has really come on since he's been fighting out of Sanford. And I think you can you can see that if you watch kind of his uh, what, even one or two of his early fights and watch him now. He's a nice body lock, lovely takedowns from it. But he is you know known. I, I would say predominantly as a striker. He's eleven. Uh, knockouts in his 15 wins, four decisions. Never won a fight by submission, but you know I, I could see one coming if he keeps going uh, the way uh, the way he is. You watch uh, Wakamatsu, and the first thing you notice about him, I think, are his feints. Feints very, very well, moves very well defensively, and then he throws those uh, lovely leg kicks. He likes to pressure uh, and make himself a counter fighter by kind of pulling the person out with their shots with his pressure his one twos are unbelievable his speed is just insane you know you saw that in the Demetrius fight and you saw that in the Marais fight and other fights as well his speed is just uh, insane his kicking speed as well is unbelievable Um, especially that leg kick is just uh, it's really really good he fights with that very kind of high lead hand Um, I would say his one biggest issue maybe is probably that uh, in a, a technique wise anyway it's probably that the head is in the air just a little bit like he I think he, his fence and his footwork is very good to help him defensively but I think when he gets kind of caught in an area where there's someone countering his counter sometimes that head can be in the air and he can get caught there Um, on the other side of it then for Wang Shu very very tight defensively is the first thing you'd say about him he comes up you know uh, if uh, if uh, Yuya is coming up with the kind of the the lead hand and the movement for defense I think uh, Wang is more, way more about like the high hand defense uh, and he does it very well kind of um, 
the maybe the the boxing defense, if you want to put it that way, that that we see more often, obviously without the the help of those uh, ten gallon gloves, as I, as I like to call them, or the what are they? That are eight ounce or ten ounce gloves, or whatever it might be. Um, you know, I talked about Yuya being a counter fighter. I love the counter leg kicks of Wang. That's I, I, you know one of the first things you notice about him. Really, really good leg kicks, and he he very rarely throws them unless there's a reason to throw them. If you get me, he unless someone steps in, unless someone changes uh, stances and gives him the opportunity to land them, he lands them really, really well. That does lead at times to him get getting taken down, or not even just the, not not necessarily the leg kicks, and definitely not the leg kicks, but that ability to kind of pop into range. On like the third movement, if you want to put it that way, after the shot, the counter, and then the, the second counter, that often finds you in a clinch or finds you inside, and he does get taken down from there. Now, I would say the takedown defense isn't the best in the world, but his ability to get up is really, really good. Really good. He gets that overhook, gets to a hip, makes, you know, gets that wizard, gets wide against the fence if he needs to, obviously, and gets back up. Really, really good at that. Um... And the word I would use to describe him after that, when the fights get ba- a fight gets back standing, is a whip. The leg kick, as I mentioned, whips it in. He whips that overhand right, absolute like, like a, oh my god, he, he, whip. It's the only word. Go and watch. Go just go and watch it all. And it's great. One championship. All their fights are on YouTube. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's there's no easier uh, place for me to go and research because everything's on YouTube. Absolutely whips in those shots. I. I you know, it's one of those guys you kind of, you love to watch because he does everything the right way, if you want to put it that way. He does everything the way you kind of, you, you look at guys and you think, come on, just add 10% more to that. Add a little bit more, do a little bit more with that. But Wang Shu is one of those guys, he he puts that power on everything. Um, as I said, I mentioned earlier about the clinch as well. He does get himself into the clinch very often. It's more like the body lock. I think he gets take, taken down from a lot, and it's he's usually like he's often a smaller guy in there as well. Um, and but he's he's really good in the clinch himself with strikes. I would say from the takedown aspect, from maybe the strength aspect, uh, you wouldn't put him up there as one of the best in the world. But as strikes from the clinch, really, really, really good. Uh, when you're looking at the fight, I suppose as a whole, then and, and talking about maybe who will win it, and I, I'll give my pick. Um, you would, I think you'd almost, you'd have to favor uh, 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 Wakamatsu for, and the one reason, the one kind of separation I have, I think he is more varied. And I think he lands his shots at a kind of, not a, not a higher pace necessarily, but I think he, he lands them at like, um, he, he, a higher variation rate. If you want to put it that way, like if you throw three, four, five jabs, they look good. But if you're throwing uh, leg kick, jab, straight, left hook coming after it, I think that sometimes looks better than four jabs in a row or four leg kicks. Do you know what I mean? You know, and, and I think that helps him as well to kind of take away the weapons of his opponents in that way if they are less varied, and which I think will be the case here. Now, as I said, uh, Wang doesn't have the, the level of opponent, but he, he probably has one bigger win. Uh, Quayle Oriu, who is in the, um, uh, the UFC at the moment, he's a win over him. Not that long ago, back in 2018, you know, he, he won a unanimous decision over him. So he has, you know, he has some good wins in his ledger. He's been around for a while now. He's 27 years of age, 21 fights. Um, it's a really, really fun fight, a really, really good fight. I, I would think that Wakamatsu will win it. Uh, as I said, the variation. Now, I wonder, would that variation be to try and take down as well? If it is, I think that could work very well for him. Uh, but he's not hes not that type always. I think he's that type in kind of maybe learning fights or uh, against, um, against guys who almost outmatches on the feet, against guys who are very good on the feet, like Wang. I, I think he'll probably actually strike with it, but we will see. We will see. Uh, but overall, I think it'll be a good fight, and I think uh, Wakamatsu will, uh, will take that one. 
uh, is one that I don't really have much of a preview for, uh, if I'm being honest, because one guy is Matthias Felipe, who is 0-0. Uh, the one thing I, I will tell you about him, though, he's obviously his debut, but he's an I be JJF world champion in brown belt in 2017 so you know his jiu-jitsu is going to be absolutely unbelievable he's fighting Ali Foladi now is Ali Foladi some blesses other blesses is Ali Furadi I'm not sure I'm not I'm not it's Ali Foladi though I think um couldn't he's two and up I couldn't find any of his fights apart from a couple of highlights on his own YouTube and you know what happens there um I saw one place he was described as a wrestler and then on his YouTube he's throwing wheel kicks. That's all I have for you, lads. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going to be there. Look, it looks like Felipe has been put in there and he is a, a possible future star. You know, they've done this with a lot of the wrestlers and BJJ guys over the last while and maybe they want to push him as, as a future star. So it's going to be very interesting to see the debut of Felipe, see if he can bring his jiu-jitsu uh, to the one championship cage and see if he can... Um, you know, use it to uh, to his advantage uh, over over Ali. So, um, I'm going to talk about Rogue Rogue next, and it's very interesting. Very interesting. He's fighting Batraz Gatsev. Um, uh, Gatsev is uh, he's only had three fights um, to in in his career to date. Uh, none of which have been uh, in one championship. This is his first one championship. I actually was able to get and watch two of those fights. Um, but there's only uh, four minutes, maybe, or five minutes of tape on him available out there. So we don't know much about him. What we do know about him, strong, very muscular. Uh, when he's going in there against Rug Rug, you know, you could look very muscular, but you, you know, you're not going to be as muscular as Rug Rug. But uh, immediately, he's a takedown artist. He's a guy who takes the fight to the ground as quickly as he can. Very big ground and pound. From what have I seen of his striking, which is very, very little. Now, let me say that again. Very, very little. Hasn't fought since uh, late last year. So what's it? 10 months. Now, he could come out here looking like Alistair over him. Who knows? Striking not great. That, that would be the one thing I would say about him. He's striking hasn't looked great in the bits I've seen. Now, Umar Kane, Rug Rug, his striking isn't great either, but he is an absolute beast. A man beast <laughs> is exactly what he is. And uh, he throws with reckless abandon. But, uh, you know, what I would say, if you're looking at Gazev and you're looking at him simply as a fighter himself, I'll say it again, very strong, very good wrestler, very good uh, takedowns with that wrestling, very good ground and pound, good control on top, and all of that. Striking, obviously, is still... Uh, an unknown, but from what we've seen, not great. A um, lot of questions over Rug Rug. And it's very interesting to see how he bounces back here. So his last fight was Kirill Grishenko in April of last year. Where has he been since then? What, is, what, what has he been doing since then? Um, if anyone doesn't remember that fight, so it ended at the, at the end of round two, after ten, 10 minutes of the fight, um... The whole fight was basically Rogue Rogue pushing Grishinko up against the cage and not being able to take him down, uh, which I think in itself was a mistake. He too much of a game. I think he was, where was he training? I think he went over to America to train, didn't he? Or he was training, I, I don't know, he was training somewhere. If you're Rogue Rogue, Oh, you you need to be rug rug. You need to go out there and you need to be wild. If you can pick a lad up and smash him down his head, do that. But if you can't just be wild, go out there and throw good shots. Now, uh, Kirill Grishinko is a very good fighter, so maybe that's easier said than done. Easy for me to say sitting here, uh, you know, 3,000 miles away from Singapore, wherever I am. Um, but I don't think the way forward for rug rug at this point of his career is doing what he did in. Now, having said that, as, uh, as I mentioned, April of last year was the last time he fought. How much of a change have we seen from Rug Rug, or will we see from Rug Rug? Where has he been training? What has he been doing? How has he been preparing for this? We saw a change in him the last time with a more designed game plan, you would say. A more, you know, mixed martial arts based game plan rather than, you know, the, the wild <laughs> game plan that he had before that. I wonder, will he have added to that a bit? And we could we see a more a shiny rug rug coming in here? That's, it's possible. It's possible. And do you know why? That's why I'm intrigued to see that. Anyway, back, actually, back to that fight, because I, I have to mention it. The, in the Kirill Gershinko fight, 10 minutes, up against the cage, 
at the end of that 10 minutes, like on the bell, maybe slightly after, Grishinko hit him with a big right hand and seemed to like hurt, break his nose maybe. And he went down and he refused to keep going. Like, it to me, it seemed at the time, and you know, I, th- I think uh, I think he did have an injury after it and things like that. Um, he looked for a way out, if, if we're being honest. And that's not a great thing to say from a, see even from a massive heavyweight who's going to be thrown in there against other massive heavyweights. Not a great thing at all. So you, the least you can expect here from Rug Rug is aggression, um, that power. You're always going to see that power. But you have to see like a will to win here and not a tendency to lose, if you want to put it that way. He, he uh, Rogue Rogue has a lot to prove after that last fight. He really does have a lot of pro- to prove after that last fight. And we'll see the phrase going around in MMA at the moment. Do you have that dog in you? We'll see does Rogue Rogue have the dog in him here. Now, Gasayev, what's going to happen? Who's the better wrestler here? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, Rogue Rogue has the size and he has the strength. Does Gasayev, Gasayev have the technique? Maybe, but we will see, I suppose, on, uh, on I think, Friday night, isn't it? Friday night, yeah. Or Friday morning for me, which is great. So uh, that's the one I'm really looking forward to. Who do, who will I pick? Who do I think will win it? Oh, I'll go for Rug Rug. I haven't seen enough of Gassev to, to pick him. I'll go, I'll go for Rug Rug. Uh, the next one, in, and I think this is the highest uh, f- MMA fight uh, on the card. So, of course, I'm putting it in the middle of, of my of my prediction or, or of my uh, pre- uh preview even but it's a damn 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 good fight uh Zhang Liping against Sagid Azgrimeyev absolutely nailed both of those names there but ver- two very good fighters very very impressed uh Liping very strong wrestler likes to get the fight to the ground posture up uh, ground and pound is really good while still being able to keep control. Really good at passing. Something you don't see as much in MMA these days, but he's a lovely power striker too. That front kick, especially to the face, but to the body as well. And uh, in, in his last fight, by God, he absolutely slept his opponent in 32 seconds. Ruslam Iblek uh, Uala beat Edward Fialong uh, before that. By unanimous decision. Um... And, you know, he is a guy who's definitely climbing up the ranks of one championship. Those were his only two fights so far uh, in one championship. Um, and he is a guy who I think you're going to have, um, and you're going to be hearing a lot from. You're going to be hearing a lot from over the next while. He is re- very, very good. Now, Saeed, on the other sense, switch stance fighter. He fought, uh, fought, started out of Southpaw, but switched very quickly. He's one of those lads you don't know what stance he's fighting out of. He has a lovely jab from the Orthodox. Um, a very good, solid, straight-up fighter. Straight-up would be the word I would use there. Throws that long jab. But ha- behind it, there's lovely wrestling. Throws in the double when people go forward. He's a Dagestani, so, so you know. Uh, and he loves to go for uh, for submissions as well. Looking at his record here, 20-2. and two, And of those 20 wins, 13 wins by a submission so that tells you I suppose all you need to, to know uh, for that one um, he beat a former champ uh, Nakashima in his last one if I'm not mistaken there um, and he's been you know he's been around for for a while now obviously fighting over in the uh, EFN promotion he fought against um, Nikola, uh, Nikolai Alsakin who uh, at the moment is in the PFL and you know he fought uh, Ray Cooper and Sadabu Sai and, and things like that and he um he has a win over him so that's a, a pretty good win as well um a very interesting fight I think I would go for Liping in this one now well, the bet, bet nods come out and maybe maybe I'm wrong but I, I just like him uh, he's one of those ones I, I, I one of those fighters I watch and I just think god there's there's something about him now he's fighting a 28 year old Dagestani wrestler how good is his wrestling? I think very good. Um, he has forty four fights as well, so that's a lot of a lot of damage to be taken, but also a lot of experience. So we'll see how this goes. To me, this is if not the fight of the weekend, definitely the the best fight on this card. The two most high level, uh, you know, guys on this, and I, I really, uh, I really like this fight. Really read it a lot, and think it'll be, uh, think it'll be very, very good. Um, yeah, as I said, I pick Lai Ping. Uh, but not with all, uh, not, with, not with a lot of confidence. I, I just wonder, I, w- I wonder if 
uh, if it turns into a wrestling match at any stage, who's going to win that? I think it's easier maybe to predict the striking in terms of if it gets to one place, one person win. If it gets to another place, the other person win. I think if Saeed turns it into like a straight in the pocket boxing match, I think he will probably win it from there. Whereas if Lai Ping fights further on the outside and is able to throw his kicks, throw those front kicks, keep it there, and then make Saeed come in, maybe go for takedown and just to vary it a bit I think he'd win from that position but if it does turn to that you know one person goes for a takedown gets it and gets it again and gets it again who will that be will it be Zhang or will it be Saeed and honestly I'm not too sure you think it'll be Saeed you know the Dagestani wrestler although he's a striker as well but I wouldn't I wouldn't at all be certain I wouldn't at all be certain going into that one um the next fight on the card then is in the um the women's strawweight division, uh, where Rita Fogat takes on Tiffany Teo. I would call this a wrestler versus wrestler uh, match up here. Uh, Rita, she is someone who fought uh, against uh, Stamp in her last. Well, it was her last fight. That's a, probably a bad matchup to get when you're nine fights into your career. Honestly, Stamp. We'll talk about Stamp in uh, in the preview for the next card. Um, I think she's fantastic. I think she will be fighting for a title again very, very soon, honestly. And look, Ritu had some success in that fight. She's all movement on the feet and everything to set up the takedown. Throws a big overhand, tries to tie up inside, and but jumps in on it. Really jump. And another thing she jumps in on, jumps in on the single leg. Absolutely jumps in it to get the fight to the ground. Um, now, having said that, She's never got a submission win yet in, in her career. Four decisions, three wins by a, by a TKO, and she actually got submitted against Stamp in her last one. But, you know, against uh, Ming Bo, she got a couple of takedowns. She's a win over uh, Lin Hee Quinn, who, um, you know, who we, we talked about last time, who's a very, very good fighter, who, uh, in my opinion, won against uh, uh, Igitz Hirata and was uh, on, the, on the, the wrong side of a bad decision. So she's a win over her. That's a pretty good you know, base to say what her level is. Uh, at Teo then, I suppose, on the other side of it, she's a win over Ming Bo as well. Um, and she's, a, I would say, a more confident striker in that her striking is not to set up the takedowns. It is to strike, but she, she just, she eats a lot of strikes. Uh, when she's throwing her own she goes for takedowns early but the one thing I would say about Teo is she gives up on them too quickly you know she is a good takedown artist and she's good control on top and good ground and pound but she finds herself a lot of time going for one not getting it and then not going for one until she gets hurt again now will Rita, uh, Rita Fogat be able to hurt her on the feet I don't think so Honestly, when it's a wrestler versus wrestler it's probably going to turn into a kickboxing match I think Teo wins that I think Teo wins that now I think It'll be interesting. We get, we get the uh, uh, the betting lines uh, uh, later in the week, um, and I'd be very interested to see who is the favorite here. But I'm going for Teo to win this one. I think she'll keep the fight standing, uh, and I think she'll win it there. I do think Ritu will try to come in as much as possible. She might end up on bottom by doing that and by going all out for the takedowns. So not the best. Matchup for her in the world, I would say, and a good one for uh, for Tiffany Teo. Um, yeah, very interesting uh, lineup of fights there. Um, as I said, there's more my time, um, kickboxing and all of that. Bit of submission grappling as well. Uh, Rodrigo Morello against Ruslan Bagdarashan uh, on this card as well. So a bit a bit for everyone, you know. If you like the grappling, if you like the kickboxing, if you like the old MMA. There's a bit for you here as well. So we will leave it at that. Overall, I'll go quickly. I'll, I'll just run through the card again here before I leave you. Um, the, MMA, uh, the MMA fights anyway. Uh, Leaping Zhang in the welterweight division. Obviously, these welterweight, this is the welterweight division, but lightweight. And uh, <laughs> in one championship, I'll give you the heavier division and you can uh, you could figure out which one you want it yourself. So Leiping Zhang is second and Saeed uh, is a Gamaviev uh, who is 20 and 2. 
in the welterweight division, as I said. Then Ritu Fogad is taking on Tiffany Teo at Strawhead. Uh, Shu Wang at Bantamweight is taking on Yuya Yuamatsu. Rug Rug Umir Kane, uh, the one I suppose everyone will be uh, watching out for, is taking on the 3 0. Batraz Gatsev and Ali Ferrari is taking on Matthias Felipe in his professional debut. All right, everyone, I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com, and I'll see you all next time.